In today's video, I'm going to be giving you the latest information on the new tax laws regarding Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal, as well as clear up some confusion for those who've only seen the vague media headlines. Be sure to stick around until the very end to find out if this new law impacts you or your business, and also what you can do about it. With that being said, my name is Caleb, and be sure to subscribe down below for more content just like this. Now let's begin. So this is a topic I made a video on back in early October of last year, but it's been making headlines again the last two weeks now that it's officially 2022, which means this law is now in effect. With tax season coming Coming up, of course, a lot of people are talking about this, which is leading to a lot of rumors and misinformation being spread about what this new law means, so I'm just here to clarify some things for you. Real quick, just want to say that I'm not a tax advisor, I'm not a CPA, and I'm not a financial advisor, so be sure to contact a legal professional for your specific situation. I'm just a random dude online simply sharing the information that I've found. If you want to check out the other video I did, I'll leave a link to it up here and down in the description below for you, but here's an article that basically summarizes what was passed, which I'll also put down below for you. Now it says Venmo, PayPal, and Cash App will now have to report transactions totaling more than $600 to the IRS. This law was passed as part of the American Rescue Plan, which was back in March of 2021, and this will apply to the 2022 tax season. This article also says the new tax rule is separate from a proposed IRS reporting requirement that originally would have handed over transaction data on accounts with more than $600 aggregate inflow and outflow, and that proposal, originally part of President Biden's Build Back Better plan, was raised to a $10,000 threshold after much pushback and has not yet been acted on by Congress. Now, before you get your panties in a bunch, let me explain what this actually means because it doesn't necessarily mean that you owe more in taxes, which understandably is what most people are frustrated about. This new law is just lowering the threshold at which these payment processing apps report business transactions to the IRS. Next, the article states that apps were previously required to send users a 1099k form if their gross income exceeded $20,000 or had more than 200 transactions per year. Now, if these apps are reporting to the IRS, in most cases, this means the individual person in question will also receive a matching 1099k form to be filed during tax season. Again, this still does not mean you owe more in taxes, so just bear with me here. Now, for whatever reason, a lot of people out there are thinking this threshold is the point at which you start owing taxes, which is very much not true. In other words, people are thinking that you used to only owe taxes on business income over $20,000, and now they're thinking they'll owe taxes on anything above $600, which of course is a lot lower. Now, believe me, if this was how it worked, I'd be upset too, so let me explain. Say you're running a t-shirt business on the side, for example. You sell your t shirts for $25 each, and this year you sold 100 shirts. This means that you made $2,500 this year, and this number is called your revenue, which is the grand total of money that has flowed into the business. This is not to be confused with income, which I'll explain in just a second. Now, of course, you need equipment and materials to run this t-shirt business, so in order to keep up with inventory, you have to spend about $100 a month on blank shirts, new designs, and website and shipping costs. This means that during the same year, you are spending a total of $1,200 on what is called expenses which is the grand total of money that has flowed out of the business. Now, income is what's left after you put these numbers together. So $2,500 in revenue minus $1,200 in expenses leaves you with $1,300 in income, and this is the number that you owe taxes on. Now, of course, if you made that same $2,500 in revenue but also had no expenses at all this year, your income would also be $2,500. And on the other hand, if your expenses were the same as your revenue, that would make your income technically be zero. Now, here's the punchline. Drum roll, please. All income is taxable with some exceptions. Not just income over 600 and not just income over 20,000. Technically, you're supposed to report any income you receive for your business, even if it's under $600. And this is how it's been even before this law was passed. The $600 number is just at which point the app reports your stuff to the IRS and sends you a 1099K form, not the point at which you start owing taxes. Let me repeat, you have always been required to pay taxes and report income even below $600 this entire time. If your business income was under $600, you won't get a form, but you're still supposed to report this during tax season. Now, the reason this number was lowered with this new law is because businesses could hypothetically use these apps to receive payments from customers up to $20,000 and dodge paying any tax on this income because the payment platform itself wasn't even reporting this to the IRS, which leaves very little reason for any red flags to get raised. Now, at this point, I hope you know this already, but tax evasion is illegal. So if you thought you didn't owe any taxes until after $20,000, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but this is incorrect. <laughs> So there's really only two types of people that will be impacted by this law, those who evaded taxes on purpose by using these apps, and those who evade taxes on accident simply because they were never taught these things. Now back in the article, it says that the new reporting requirement will ensure that small businesses that receive payments through those apps are paying their fair share in taxes. So for those of you who run your businesses by the books, follow the law and pay the correct amount in taxes, there's quite literally nothing to worry about. This law is not increasing taxes for anybody except those
those who are already underpaying taxes to begin with. If you think about it, $20,000 adds up pretty quickly when you're thinking of millions of people. So they lowered the reporting threshold down to $600, which would make any income over 600 pretty difficult to dodge taxes on since the payment platform will now rat you out every time. All this law does is make it harder to get away with tax evasion via these apps. Before, it was pretty easy to get away with dodging taxes all the way up to 20 grand. So that's pretty much the summary of the new law, but here's a few other key points I wanna mention. And then afterwards, I wanna address some common questions I've seen or received about this. So give me a quick like down below if you're following along so far. So the first key point here, this law only applies to business income, not your personal transactions. This law does not apply to gifts. It doesn't apply to sending money to friends and family to split rent or a bill at a restaurant or even borrowing money from someone and paying them back. None of these things need to be worried about whatsoever. This also doesn't even apply to selling personal items like at a garage sale or on eBay. Now, if you're actually running a business on eBay, that's one thing. But if you're just getting rid of some old furniture or some other items and you sell it on eBay, this money is generally not taxable. Tax on selling personal items that isn't part of a business only becomes a variable if you make a profit on that item. So for example, if you bought a couch years ago for $1,000 and you sell it for $800, you're fine. But if you sold it for more than you bought it for, that's when taxes come into play. This new law only applies to business transactions, which is why most of these apps have the option to select whether the transaction is personal or for business. In the United States, we run on a trust-based tax system, so it's really up to you to report these things appropriately in this regard. But another thing I wanted to mention is that you don't need to document all your personal transactions with this law. So you can split rent as you please, borrow money from your mom, you're good. There's no need to write any of these things down at all. If you run a business though, you should be documenting everything. And if you aren't, well, you should have been doing this the entire time. And the last thing I wanted to mention before I get into some common questions is the difference between a hobby and a side hustle when it comes to determining if what you're doing counts as a business or not. So here's an example of a hobby. You like to crochet in your free time, you spend hundreds of dollars a year on new yarn, but occasionally you'll sell a scarf or a hat to your friend or a family member for like $40, but you only do this a few times a year. This could be considered a hobby because the revenue generated doesn't come anywhere close to the expenses. And also if it's a hobby, you can't claim those expenses as a deduction. Now what could make this qualify as a business and not a hobby is the IRS safe harbor rule. This is actually taken from a TurboTax article, so I'll link that down below for you as well. But it says if you've turned a profit in at least three of five consecutive years, the IRS will presume that you are engaged in it for a profit. So in other words, if you have legitimate proof that you're doing something for profit or for a livable income, and you also have proof of business intent, you could count your hobby as a business, even if your expenses are more than your revenue, but you can only do this for a couple years at most before the IRS expects you to become profitable. A perfect example of this is actually this YouTube channel right here. Last year, I accumulated over $5,000 in expenses for all of my equipment and my camera, but so far I haven't made a single penny from YouTube. Now all businesses have startup costs of some kind, so if I'm expecting to generate enough revenue in the future to become income, say this year, then I could consider my YouTube channel a business. I hope that all makes sense. Basically, if your intent is for profit or you're currently generating a profit, it's probably a business. If your expenses are more than your revenue consistently or you have zero revenue altogether, it's probably a hobby. Now, like I said, you can only deduct expenses against your regular income if those expenses are business related. Expenses related to a hobby don't qualify for tax deductions, at least as of 2018. Now for some rapid fire questions. So what are all the platforms that are affected by this? PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, Google Pay, Apple Pay, Facebook Messenger, MoneyGram, Google Wallet, Samsung Pay, Square, and many others. If it's business income, it doesn't matter where it's coming from, and all third-party payment processing apps will be required to report to the IRS. Do I need to keep receipts to prove my transactions are not business related? No. Am I going to get taxed if my roommate sends me his half of rent on Venmo or we split a bill at a restaurant? No. Will I be taxed if I borrow $2,000 from my mom for college? No. But if she keeps sending you money like this, after enough times, she could actually be taxed. Will I be taxed if I hold a garage sale or get rid of some junk on eBay? No, unless you sold an item for more than you bought it. So in the vast majority of cases, still no, but this is not a business and it's also not income. Is the government going to snoop through my transactions now? No, they're not going to do this, at least not your personal ones, and probably not your business transactions either. The IRS will receive the total inflow and outflow, but won't be able to see the individual itemized transactions unless you get audited. Are my taxes going to increase now? No, unless you're already underpaying or evading, which of course is illegal. Do I need to claim my business income even if it's under $600? Yes, and you need to document all of it and report all of it, no matter how much it is. My app doesn't let me distinguish between personal and business transactions, so what should I do about that? What you should do is document 
document the business transactions elsewhere, use a different app that does let you pick or write accurate information in the transaction notes. Will I be safe if I just go back to using cash? Well, really what this question says is, will I be able to continue illegally evading taxes if I go back to using cash? And the answer is, well, probably, but don't do that. Will I get a 1099K form for all the times my roommate gave me rent money this year? No, and you won't have to prove that it was for rent either. Does getting a 1099K form mean that I owe taxes? Well, it really depends. The part that people are missing is the taxes you may or may not owe is not dependent upon getting the form or not. Taxes you owe are based on your business revenue minus expenses, and that remaining income is what's taxable. So if your business made $150 and you had to spend $100 to make that, the remaining $50 is where the taxation comes in, which leads to the last question. My business made less than $600 this year. Will I owe taxes even if I didn't get a 1099K form? Yes. If there was income, it's probably taxable, even if it was just a measly $50 in profit. So in summary, the key questions to ask yourself here are one, is it business income? And two, am I evading taxes? Other than that, the vast majority of people don't need to worry about this new tax law because it probably doesn't have any impact on you. Now to the business owners out there, just document your stuff correctly, talk with the CPA and just pay your taxes, which you should honestly be doing anyway. Anyways, let me know what you think about this new law in the comments down below and be sure to like this video and subscribe if you found this information valuable. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching, pay your taxes, and I'll catch you in the next one.